In the time between the Olympus and Candon videos, we were finally blessed with the arrival of Metroid Dread, and today we will look at the game's secondary antagonists, the Emmy. Before the events of Metroid Dread, the Galactic Federation had received a mysterious video message. It seemed to suggest that even after Samus destroyed the BSL station in planet SR388, the ex-parasite, lifeforms with the ability to mimic biological beings, somehow remained in the galaxy. The transmission was traced to the uncharted world, planet ZDR, the homeworld of the Morkin Choso tribe. The Galactic Federation dispatched a team of seven Emmy to the planet to investigate if the video was true, but soon after touching down, the Federation lost contact with all seven Emmy robots. Samus Aran would also see the video message about the ex-parasite and race to the planet ZDR to investigate for herself if the video was true. There, she would encounter the Emmy for the first time. The Extraplanetary Multiform Mobile Identifier, or EMI for short, is a highly agile research robot designed to extract DNA from specimens. The EMI appear to have been manufactured by Excellion Star Corporation, as their logo is seen within the schematics for the machines. But the Team of Seven deployed onto planet ZDR were sent by the Galactic Federation, suggesting they commissioned the ESC to build the EMI for them. The EMI are built using the strongest materials in the universe to allow for research in many, likely hostile environments where it was too dangerous for humans to go. Their design aided in their ability to carry out research as well, having a roughly humanoid build, but being able to contort and rotate their joints at every angle. As an example, an Emmy can compress its overall size to squeeze into small spaces, or it can turn around in place by rotating its body parts instead of moving its feet to turn the whole body. Speaking of which, each of the four limbs of the Emmy ends with hand-lick structures, each possessing four sharp claws to scale walls and ceilings, as well as to grab specimens and apply its DNA extracting spike into the subject's body. This is mounted on the face of the Emmy. The face is usually covered by a faceplate of some kind to shield the big, vulnerable eye of the machine. There are seven different models of Emmy from what we see in Metro Dread, which we will get to soon. Each is confined to a designated Emmy zone on planet ZDR, tasked with patrolling those areas. Interestingly, Bereni is the exception. That region doesn't have an Emmy due to there being two in Artaria. It is in these zones that Samus will encounter an Emmy, which will pursue and hunt her down unless she is either no longer within the Emmy zone or dead. An Emmy will send out a pulse to detect vibrations in the air within a certain range. Essentially, they can hear things such as Samus' gunfire and footsteps as she moves in the Emmy zone. The Emmy naturally possess visual detection capabilities thanks to the huge eye, which emits light to indicate its state. If an Emmy's light is blue, it is in patrol mode, meaning it has not detected a threat. If it is yellow, it is in search mode, where it has detected the noise a target has made and will investigate the area where the noise originated. If the presence of the target is verified, it will go into pursuit mode, where its light turns red and begins to chase the subject, in this case, Samus. But why are the Emmy after Samus in the first place? Well, it is revealed that these DNA extracting machines are relentlessly bent on capturing Samus to extract her Metroid DNA for the chosen Morkin leader, Ravenbeak. He and Quiet Rope had reprogrammed the Emmy to give them this mission, but there are things about this that I'll cover later on. For now, Ravenbeak has ordered the Emmy to extract Samus' Metroid DNA for him. Naturally, Samus will have to run away from an Emmy in pursuit, as it is completely invulnerable to a normal weaponry. Destructible terrain doesn't even stop a chasing Emmy, as it will charge right through it. However, a shutter platform will only stall it. This can buy much needed time to escape. The only effective way of avoiding detection altogether is to use the Phantom Cloak, which turns the user invisible and causes no noise when moving. This ability, however, only lasts for a short time, and if an Emmy makes physical contact with the user, it will still detect them. It is also ineffective if the Emmy has already detected the user. Escape is the only option. The Emmy aren't without weakness, however. The six intact Emmy on planet ZDR are linked to a designated central unit each. The central unit appears to be serving as the control unit for their designated Emmy. We will cover the central unit specifically another time, but for now, it's important to know that when Samus destroys the central unit, she temporarily gains the ability to utilize the Omega Cannon. This is the only way to destroy an Emmy. Once the central unit is destroyed, the Emmy will automatically go into pursuit mode and attempt to chase Samus down. It is here where Samus must make a stand and use the Omega Cannon to take out the Emmy within that area of the planet. If she is unsuccessful, the Emmy will grab her and impale her with the DNA extracting spike on its face, causing death. It is possible to melee counter the Emmy before it grabs Samus and before it impales her with its spike, but the timing for these counters are very tight, especially the latter one. It's best just not to get caught. But if the melee counter is successful, then Samus has a chance to get away. If she manages to destroy an Emmy, she will lose the ability to use the Omega Cannon. On the other hand, she will obtain whatever ability the Emmy possessed, causing the physical form of the machine to disappear. So that covers the overall description of the Emmy collectively. 
but during the events of Metro Dread, Samus encounters the team of seven sent by the Galactic Federation. Each of these bar one house abilities that Samus can obtain, as hinted by their designation. We're going to cover them all individually here, starting with the first in the game. Emmy 01 p is the first Emmy that Samus encounters on planet ZDR. It's located in the secondary Emmy zone within the rocky caverns of Artaria and is heavily damaged. The Chozo archives of Metro Dread revealed that 01 p had an encounter with Ravenbeak and was brutally defeated, leaving it without an arm, faceplate, and visibly scorched and sparking. It wasn't destroyed though, as 01 p can slowly walk in a bipedal stance when normally an Emmy would walk around on its fours. We see from the Emmy's perspective for a moment, and there's a very appropriate Terminator-like heads-up display. Emmy 01 p temporarily gets a hold of Samus, but she can merely counter out of its grasp and escape by sliding underneath it. She would go up to higher ground, where the Emmy can't reach her thanks to its heavily damaged state. Samus would then acquire the Omega Cannon for the first time as the central unit, which was also heavily damaged, was nearby. Samus would use the Omega Cannon to finally put the crippled machine out of commission. She would lose the ability to use the Omega Cannon for now, and didn't receive an upgrade from r one p as it disintegrated. The second Emmy that Samus encounters appears to be the standard model as it possesses all the features mentioned earlier. Emmy 2 sm possesses the ability to climb on walls and ceilings, but also has large faceplate projections, causing its ability to fit in narrow passageways to be limited. This is a flaw that Samus takes advantage of during escapes. This Emmy has various modes as mentioned earlier, like search and patrol, as well as the ability to walk on its falls. Emmy 2 sm patrols the main Emmy zone within the facilities of Artaria. o 2 sm wastes no time in chasing after Samus when detecting her. Upon Adam's advice, and likely her common sense, she continues to evade it as she explores the region. When she eventually reaches the room containing the functioning central unit that is controlling O2SM, she engages in a fight with it in a way that feels really familiar. She defeats it and gains the ability to use the Omega Cannon once again. She also gains a new trait of the weapon which is needed to take out all of the Emmy from this point on, the Omega Stream. It fires rapid fire shots and can overheat the faceplate of an Emmy, causing it to shatter and leave the big eye exposed to the Omega Blaster, which is the charged shot of the Omega Cannon. Upon defeating the central unit, Emmy 2 sm enters patrol mode and begins to chase down Samus wherever she goes. Her only option is to stand her ground and use the Omega Cannon to take out the Emmy. She would use the Omega Stream to shatter the Emmy's faceplate, causing the machine to slowly walk upright from that moment on. If it gets to Samus in this state, it will immediately grab her, giving Samus only one chance to counter its fatal spike attack. Thankfully, if the person controlling Samus isn't a gaming journalist, this won't happen and she'll blast a shot of the Omega Blaster right into the eye of O2SM. With the Emmy out of commission, Samus will touch it and obtain the ability to use the Spider Magnet, which allows it to climb on walls that are marked with blue magnetic strips. Once taking the upgrade, O2SM will fade into dust. Within the Emmy zone of the intense thermopowered Cataras, the green-coloured Emmy 3 mb patrolled in search of Samus. At this point, Samus has obtained the Phantom Cloak and she uses it to avoid the Emmy in her initial encounter with it. Even in search mode, o 3 mb is unable to detect Samus while she is in her Phantom Cloak. Because of this, the Emmy turned and contorted into a smaller form through an air vent, showcasing a trait that would become common for the Emmy encounters from here on out. It can move through smaller spaces thanks to the smaller faceplate projections, but this specific Emmy has the desirable Morph Ball ability. Like before, Samus would explore Cataris, ensuring to avoid the Emmy however she could. Eventually, she would destroy the central unit that controlled O3 MB and would destroy the Emmy too, acquiring the Morph Ball ability. To save time, I'll skip over this process as it's largely unchanged until later. Emmy 4 sb patrolled the Emmy zone within the Dairon area, a chosen biological research site where bioweapons were created by the Morkin tribe. Even though a large portion of the facility had no power, the Emmy zone was fully operational, as was the Emmy within. The yellow-coloured Emmy could run at extremely high speeds, and would use this to chase Samus through the hallways of the Emmy zone. The only way to stop the charge is to close a shutter in its path, which Samus would use to escape in her initial encounter with O4SB. Like the green Emmy, O4SB can reconfigure itself to move in small spaces, as can every further Emmy, but O4SB does it at the same pace, despite possessing the speed booster ability. Samus would destroy O4SB and retrieve the speed booster and shine spark technique. Emmy 5 im which is ice blue in colour, patrolled the Emmy zone in the underground jungle of Gavarin. It is first seen in an offline state, thanks to Quiet Rope deactivating all the Emmy at the point of his meeting with Samus. After meeting an unfortunate end and the X Parasite being released upon ZDR, Quiet Rope's X copy reactivated all of the remaining Emmy, including 5 im 
It then showcased its ability to freeze anything it sees, completely bypassing pursuit mode until the central unit is destroyed. Samus's weakness to ice thanks to her Metro DNA made O5IM particularly dangerous as its vision is much more focused and extended. Walls and the Phantom Cloak ability will prevent visual contact, and thus freezing. Once Emmy O5IM is destroyed, Samus will obtain the ice missile. Samus encountered Emmy O6WB before the previous model. She almost met her end at its spike within the Emmy zone of the ancient Chozo sanctuary, Ferenia. The purple machine had stunned Samus as she had stopped to examine a Chozo mural and ambushed her, smashing through the mural to grab her. It would be stopped from killing Samus thanks to Quiet Rope, who deactivated all Emmy robots remotely. O6WB dropped Samus and went offline. But as mentioned earlier, Quiet Rope's X copy would reactivate all of the remaining Emmy. O6WB would awaken and hunt Samus when she returned to the area. Much like its blue counterpart, Emmy O6WB could temporarily stun Samus when she enters its field of vision. The damage and duration of the stun are less than O5IM shot, but the more dangerous trait of O6WB is that it could virtually hear Samus anywhere within the zone. Its vision had greater range and could see through terrain, making it difficult for Samus to get around the Emmy zone without being detected. What didn't help is that the zone had considerable amounts of water, making it hard to escape if O6WB entered pursuit mode. The grapple beam, which can be used to pull Samus to blue magnetic strips and use the spider magnet if desired, would help tremendously in evading the purple robot. Once Samus destroys Emmy O6WB, she will obtain the wave beam ability. The orange-red coloured Emmy O7PB is the final Emmy that Samus encounters on planet ZDR. It ambushes Samus when she enters the Emmy zone in Hanubia, ZDR's surface. Regardless of whether she uses the Phantom Cloak or not, O7PB will detect Samus and unleash a powerbomb explosion, damaging the room and staggering Samus until it closes in. Samus manages to melee counter the Emmy, but then becomes distracted by her Metro DNA starting to take a more prominent effect in her body. During this, the Emmy recovers from the counter and pins Samus down. In a blink, it activates its DNA extracting spike, but Samus manages to grab the spike before it stabs her. This causes her Metro powers to fully activate as she tries to get the machine off. The Metro powers start to siphon the energy from the Emmy, despite being fully mechanical. This causes the Emmy, as well as its associated central unit, to be completely neutralized thanks to the energy draining ability. As Samus realizes her newfound ability, she tosses O7PB aside and accepts her new power. She is then attacked by a red Chozo soldier immediately afterwards, where she also uses her new ability to absorb it, recovering her health and missiles back to full with the clench of the fist. Samus returns ha, to the lifeless Emmy after defeating the Chozo soldier and claims the ability to use the devastating power bomb. Upon the disintegration of Emmy O7PB, all Emmy on planet ZDR has been eradicated, despite the orders of the bounty to ensure that they were treated with care. <sighs> God, that was a lot to cover, but fun nonetheless. As I mentioned earlier, there are a couple things about the Emmy that somewhat confuse me. For example, how did Ravenbeak and Quiet Robe know that Samus possessed Metroid DNA to have the Emmy extracted from her? Well, that's where my little theory comes in. My theory is that the Galactic Federation had Excelli and Star Corporation make the Emmy under the guise of being research machines, but with the true purpose of extracting Samus's Metroid DNA for the Galactic Federation. So in this instance, the Federation is still bad and wants Samus for her Metroid DNA. I don't buy that Samus is all buddy-buddy with the Federation after what happens in Other M and especially Fusion on top of that. The clues are in the opening cutscene of Dread. The bounty for this mission does not seem appropriate. The risk clearly outweighs the reward. I interpret Adam's comments about keeping the Emmy safe as being sarcastic, which is pretty fitting given the context. It's also clear that Samus isn't going to ZDR for the bounty of finding the Emmy. She's there solely to see if the X exist and to eradicate them if she can. She also didn't hesitate to destroy the Emmy when given the chance. It's these bits of info that lead me to believe that the Federation, or at least the ringleaders as dumb as that is, want Samus for her Metro DNA. At this point, having been duped twice, Samus should naturally be distrustful of the entire faction because she's clearly being hunted. And no, don't give me that bad apples crap. No one trusts their governments anyway, let alone if a member of them does something that targets them specifically. Samus is being hunted, her ideology is being blatantly challenged, and on top of that, she's been personally betrayed by the Federation twice over. There's no reason for her to trust them. The main party of the Federation clearly doesn't care enough to stop those after her, so why trust them too? 
There's even evidence in the schematics of the Emi themselves. It's oddly specific and coincidental that their main purpose is to extract DNA and to have Samus herself in their databanks, isn't it? Given the Galactic Federation's actions in both Other M and Metro Fusion, it is entirely possible that the true purpose of the Emi is to extract Samus's Metro DNA while having the facade of being research robots under a technicality. This is akin to how the Federation had biologic space laboratories build the BSL research station under the guise of researching life forms, but the true purpose was to allow the Galactic Federation to propagate Metroid clones. And again, I don't want to see people say, not really, that's how it is narratively constructed to be interpreted. It would explain why Samus was already on the databanks of the Emmy and how Ravenbeak found out about Samus having Metro DNA beforehand. It would also make sense as to why Ravenbeak initially spares Samus. He knew she had the Metro DNA and knew it would activate upon seeing him. As stated in the game, he wanted the DNA to become more potent, so her being left to get stronger makes sense too. In a win-win situation, Ravenbeak would have Samus get stronger to be a better weapon, but if she isn't strong enough, the Emmy were there to take her Metro DNA. So in reality, the reprogramming wasn't to change the purpose of the Emmy, but to instead change their allegiance from the Galactic Federation to Ravenbeak. And how would Ravenbeak even get the schematics for the Emmy? Well, O1P is the best candidate for that. It was in a state where it couldn't fight back against Ravenbeak anymore. Like, the guy's an absolute chad. This would have allowed for Quiet Robe and Ravenbeak to study the machine, learn of its purpose, and to reprogram the other remaining Emmy on the planet. Therefore, having the Emmy hunt Samus's Metro DNA for Ravenbeak, but also coming into play later on when Quiet Rope saves Samus. Going forward, I'm not sure how the Emmy could be used unless it's explicitly stated that they are being used by the Federation to hunt Samus. We know that another mainline Metroid is being discussed, and I really hope it goes into Samus' feud with the Federation. That being said, it's entirely possible that the X aren't quite done yet, as we see Chosa spacecraft go missing at the end of Dread. Who knows exactly what this could mean, but it may bring Samus, the X, and the Federation into conflict once again. So that's everything we know about the Emmy and some speculation I have about their true purpose. Unsurprisingly, there was a lot to cover on the Emmy thanks to their prominence in Metro Dread, which has now become the best-selling Metro game of all time. That's so awesome, and it definitely deserves it. It took 20 years for Metro Prime to be beaten in terms of sales, so imagine what Prime 4's numbers are going to be like. Regardless, the sales numbers have been helpful for Metroid going forward. Prime getting these numbers spawned one of the greatest trilogies in gaming. I can only imagine what will come next. Let me know what you think about the Emmy. Do you like them, or did you find them a little annoying? Tell me what you think about my theory too, as it's something I genuinely think to be the case. There are too many clues to point to it, and it just makes the most sense to me. And also let me know of any issues, but be a little constructive, okay? If you want to support me, you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with other Metroid fans. You can also become a patron, where you can get some perks like seeing videos early and suggest specific videos that you want me to cover. So that's going to be it from me. I've been that Metro guy, and I will see you on the next mission. Bye bye.